Hell at 4.30 on WKYT this morning. An arson investigation is underway after two dumpster fires overnight. Lexington's new police chief is set to be sworn in today. His plans for the future coming up. Widespread rain out there this morning, and as we go through time, it changes over to snow, a little bit of a wintry mix. we got a lot to talk about. We'll have all that coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning from WKYT, live from Lexington. Glad to have you with us as we get this new day and week off and rolling. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith for the first track on the weather. Let's turn to meteorologist Micah Harris. That's pretty ugly out there this morning. It does not look good, doesn't feel good. And we see temperatures there in the mid 30s. That's helping us out a lot. And you know what else helped us out a lot? Temperatures in the 40s yesterday. That really heated that ground big time. But the problem is, the ground is still cold and still freezing in some locations, and that's why we had that freezing rain advisory over toward the east overnight, but that has been canceled. Nonetheless, you got to watch out for some slick spots out and about. With all this rain moving on through current temperatures, like I said, mid-30s for most. You got some 40s down south. That's why the uh, advisories have been taken off over toward the east and southeast. Uh, the ground's heating up just a little bit more, but today's forecast, it just doesn't look good. We'll change this over to snow later on, and I'll show you what time you can expect that coming up. Okay, see you in a bit. Thank you, Micah. Yeah, and new this morning, we have some information. Uh, fire officials investigating an arson overnight after having to deal with a number of dumpster fires. And around 11 o'clock last night, crews were called to Nicholasville Road and Lowry Lane. They quickly put out the fire, but shortly afterwards, they reported another dumpster fire on Malibu Drive. Fire officials say the fires are suspicious, and they are investigating for a possible arson and possible link. Apparently, there's a uh... Been a rash of dumpster fires in the area, and we've got investigators looking into it. Firefighters say those fires were near buildings and could have been dangerous. We're tracking the investigation into a weekend barn fire that killed three of the owner's prized thoroughbreds. Fire crews say the barn off Paris Pike near the Bourbon County line went up in flames just before midnight. A state trooper first saw the fire and alerted residents there. The owner of the barn says he was planning to take his horses to Keeneland next week for the annual sale. Neighbors hope that he'll be able to rebuild. He can't blame himself. It's just something that happens. He'll come back. It'll take him a while to figure it out. He'll be back. Investigators are planning to go back later today and try and determine the cause of the fire. A Madison County woman is getting some help from the community after she lost her barn in a different weekend fire. Flames destroyed Marla Beck's barn on Red House Road in Richmond. Five calves died that were inside. Beck is a kindergarten teacher in Madison County. WKYT Sam Smith talked with coworkers who are trying to help Beck get back on her feet. Bouncing back from a large fire like this is not an easy task, but it's something Marla Beck won't do alone. And all of us were texting back and forth. What can we do? How fast can we get out there and clean it up? Beck is a teacher and has been teaching for three decades in Madison and Boyle counties. Her friends and co workers at LaFontaine Preparatory School in Richmond were relieved no one was hurt in that fire. As we heard about everything that was in the barn, that relief started turning into kind of just a, a, a really sad, almost devastating feeling. All of the family's tools and sentimental items were lost, as well as five calves. We've all heard about her calves and uh, the amount of work that they put into them. And so little by little, you just started feeling more and more sad about everything that they had lost. Folks here are using an online fundraising site to raise money for Beck and her family. My son, that was his, that's going to be his favorite teacher forever because he, he felt loved by her. A $5,000 goal is listed on their Give Forward page. That'll help pay for what was destroyed while the family waits on their insurance to take over. Marla has been so helpful to so many people in our community, so we think this is a good opportunity to help Marla out. In Richmond, Sam Smith, WKYT. All right, thanks so much, Sam. LaFontaine Preparatory School is accepting donations for the family. They say gift cards from the hardware store would be the best way to help. Firefighters say this time of year, barn fires do increase. Crews think that the rise is because of more animals staying in for warmth and more owners turning up the heat. Firefighters say their response time is between six and seven minutes. Sometimes it's just too late. I, an animal obviously can't tell you that, that the barn's on fire like we could a, a home. So, 
that is going to delay a response in getting the fire extinguished or even getting it discovered. Firefighters say excess hay and cobwebs can easily catch fire and help flames spread. Well, he's accused of stabbing his own nephew. A Boyle County man is in jail on assault charges. Police say he got into an argument with his nephew at their home in Junction City. Police believe that Sean Hobbs stabbed his nephew, Brandon Hobbs. WKYT's Jordan Villain spoke with Sean's son about what happened. It's fair to say that most families fight at one time or another, but on Saturday... My dad was inside... The trailer working on a heater. Inside this Boyle County family's home. You have a screwdriver, so he was using a knife. That fighting. My cousin came in, Brandon. They got in some kind of altercation. Turned physical between 49 year old Sean Hobbs and his nephew, 23 year old Brandon Hobbs. Relatives tell us that Brandon and Sean had gotten into fights before, but what happened on Saturday night took it to a whole other level after their initial fight. We're told that Brandon came back to the house, this time armed with a taser. We began tasing him. I understand it was multiple times. I'm not sure how many, somewhere between three or five. Sean's son Alex says what happened next. Probably afraid he was going to die. Was an act of self defense. He already had the knife in his hand, so it's not like he actively went to find it to hurt him. Police say Sean stabbed his nephew Brandon three times. He's at UK. He's in a medically induced coma. Um, he either is aortic. Valve or artery had got hit. Alex hopes his cousin recovers quickly, but says in this situation, he doesn't believe that his dad was in the wrong. I just don't want people to think my dad's some sort of killer, some, someone who would quickly resort to violence. In Boyle County, he was being tased, you know, in excessive amount. Jordan Valines. I think anybody would fear for their life. WKYT. And Junction City Police are continuing to investigate whether self-defense played a part in the stabbing. In Jessamine County, a woman is behind bars after police say she got into an argument with her boyfriend and then stabbed him. Nicholasville Police say Elizabeth Maston stabbed her boyfriend in the chest, face, and arm. She then called 911 for help and waited for uh, with him there until they arrived. Emergency crews rushed her boyfriend to UK Hospital. Maston is in the Jessamine County Detention Center. Police are searching for a man they say robbed a Lexington restaurant at gunpoint. Officers say the man walked into the Dairy Queen off New Circle Road around 9 o'clock last night, demanded cash. They think he's in his 40s, about 6 foot 3, 200 pounds. He was seen wearing jeans, a red hoodie, and black scarf. We're told he has a handgun. New this morning, Lexington police arrested a Blackburn prison correctional officer for bringing in contraband. According to his arrest citation, Blackburn staff say they caught Michael Bailey with marijuana hidden in his lunchbox during a random check. He's been charged with promoting contraband. He's scheduled to be arraigned later today. A man indicted for a deadly shooting almost two years ago is set to be back in court today. Lexington police say Devont Webb fired shots inside a bowling alley on New Circle Road back in April of 2013. Stephen Reynolds died in that shooting. Webb was indicted in August of that year. Police arrested him that June. A wanted man from London is behind bars this morning after a string of crimes. On Saturday night, police arrested Joshua Smith in Lexington after an extensive search by state troopers and Lexington police. State police say last month Smith stole a car from a car lot and tried to break into a pharmacy in Laurel County. Police have been searching for him ever since. Well, on Saturday, they received a tip that he was at a hotel in Lexington. He was arrested and taken back to Laurel County where he faces several charges. We have a traffic reminder for you this morning. Construction crews have been out on New Circle Road overnight between Versailles and Leestown. The left lane of the inner loop is closed right now, but will reopen within the hour. The state is asking drivers to avoid the area if they can. It's all part of that project to widen New Circle Road. Attorney General Jack Conway expected to file his candidacy for governor today. Conway and his running mate, State Representative Sani Overly, will officially announce their plans to run later this morning. Conway has served as the Commonwealth's attorney of the chief uh, law officer of the state since 2008. In 2010, he lost the race for the U.S. Senate against Rand Paul. Overly is currently the Democratic caucus chair for the Kentucky House. Majority party candidates uh, have until January 27. Seventh to apply for the 2015 governor's race. Lexington's new chief of police will be sworn in today. Former assistant chief of police Mark Barnard is to be sworn in this morning at police headquarters. Lexington Mayor Jim Gray appointed Barnard last month. He will take over for Ronnie Baston, who is resigning to become the city's public safety commissioner.
And I hope our agency is, is living up to our expectations. I think we are. There's always room and constant improvement in evaluating that. But we have really well trained, really well educated, dedicated officers that really love their jobs and what they're doing. And I hope our community supports them. The ceremony for the new chief will take place at 9 o'clock this morning.